Coming up on 21st Century, two stories of immense courage, a defector from North Korea, building hope, and rescued from the Holocaust, keeping faith in humanity. This is a system that has no parallel in the modern world in terms of its hold on its own people. North Korea, its people trapped in misery. The North Korean government uses public executions still to this day. A story of immense courage and escape. And the struggle to build understanding between divided peoples. Through my story, people can understand North Korea's life. <laughs> a wedding rehearsal. The big day is still a few weeks ahead. My name is Ju Chan Yang. I'm 25 years old. Hong Kong size is big. Yeah, it's Chan Yang, with her fiancé Xin Yang and mother, is sampling the menu and venue for her wedding banquet, which will take place here soon. Just a few years ago, Chan Yang never imagined that life would take her here, to this land of such plenty. She and her family now live in Seoul. South Korea's dynamic capital city. But they're from one of the most isolated and repressive nations on earth, where she spent most of her childhood starving. Chan Yang grew up in North Korea, also known as the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or DPRK, which in the 1990s suffered an immense famine due to the political policies of the country's leaders. According to United Nations estimates, up to 2 million people died of starvation. North Koreans risked their lives to shoot this present-day footage inside the country. The Kim family, who've ruled North Korea since the 1940s, have used the state to build the country's military might, including allegedly nuclear weapons. The government, both then and now, runs the country with an iron fist. Any dissent penalized with torture, incarceration or death. North Korean people basically understand that if they express the wrong kind of thoughts, the whole family can be punished. This could mean that they're sent to you know, an inhospitable part of the rural countryside, or it could mean that they're actually just sent completely to a political prison camp, and completely shut off from even other ordinary North Koreans. Torture is tragically just a part of a criminal investigation in North Korea. And executions also, um, you know, the North Korean government uses public executions still to this day in order to send a message and to spread fear. And because all media and internet are state controlled, ordinary people have no access to the web or foreign press and are led to believe that this is the normal way to live. 
But against this backdrop of terror and control, Chan Yang's family secretly listened to radio broadcasts from the outside world. Somehow, he had to get the family out to have a chance of a decent life in South Korea. People who escape, if caught and returned, can face imprisonment and execution. 되게 지금도 생각하면 마음이 아픈 거는 가족들이 탈북한 다음에 정말 가족들이 무사히 탈, 탈북 성공하기를 간절히 빌었죠. 근데 한국의 아빠 엄마가 무사히 갔는데 우리 지금 분명 한 나라 땅에 있는데 몇 시간이면 갈수 있는데 다 같은 나를 바라보면서 갈수 없잖아요. 그래가지고 되게 아 만날 수 없나 뭐 이런. Shenyang was now on one side of the most heavily militarized border in the world, and her family on the other. 진짜 몇 시간만 차를 두 시간만 타고 타고 가면 내 가족이 있는데 못 만나. 상상해 보세요. 어 그래가지고 계속 달 보면서 억울했어요 되게. Shenyang's mother also suffered. 그 정말 자식을 두고 왔다는 그런 고통은 뭐 어디 다른 데다가 비기지 못하겠더라고요. 밥도 뭐 대한민국의 진수 성찬을 차려놔도 그게 맛이 없고 그러니까 정말 잠도 자도 발편잠 못 자고 악몽에서 헤매죠. The problem of Korea also. The tragic division of the two Koreas took place decades ago. When in 1950. The peninsula was torn apart by one of the most brutal civil wars the world has seen. The United Nations Security Council intervened, dispatching both a ceasefire order and a UN force. For three years, both diplomats and troops struggled to restore peace. Eventually, a two-mile-wide buffer zone was established between the two sides. But, despite the ceasefire, the two countries are technically still at war with each other. Chan Yang and her family are not the only ones to have been separated by the division. 94-year-old Mr. Gang fled from north to south during the war. He left his family behind and then had no contact with any of his loved ones in North Korea for 60 years. No. Today, he tells his story to Marzuki Darizma, an independent expert. Mr. Darizma is tasked by the United Nations Human Rights Council to investigate violations of people's rights in North Korea, such as the separation of families from their loved ones. Family reunion should not be seen as a humanitarian issue. It's, it's, uh, it's a human right in itself. Uh, 60,000 families are uh, known to be separated. We are appealing and pushing the uh, South Korean government also to give it the highest priority, actually, you know, in uh, reaching out to the North Koreans. In the world, we can't get together with each other, we can't get together with each other, we can't get together with each other, we can't get together with each other. Ha Moo Jin from the South Korean Ministry of Unification 
says some six to seven million people on both sides remain separated from loved ones. 남북이 이상 가족 문제를 본격적으로 논의하기 시작한 것은 1970년대부터입니다. And thanks to these efforts, there has been some progress. Mr. Gang was chosen to take part in a reunion of divided families, one of just 20 such meetings since 2000. Family members from the South, most of them now in their 80s, travel to the North to meet their long-lost loved ones. Mr. Gang, who'd applied to meet his sister, found instead that he had a son he didn't even know existed, who'd been born to his former wife. The family spent two days together under highly supervised conditions before once again being wrenched apart. Many of them are now so elderly they know the chance of ever seeing their loved ones again is remote. Mr. Darisman also seeks to help ease the suffering of Koreans. This is a system that has no parallel in the modern world in terms of its hold on its own people, in terms of its massive scale of uh, human rights violations, and in terms of its totalistic control of the very lives of its individual citizens. Barred from entering North Korea, Mr. Darisman visits neighboring countries. On this visit, he's in South Korea to gather information on the situation and to bring an end to the ongoing injustice. He meets people like Mr. Kang, as well as high-level officials. Today, he's at the Ministry of Unification, which has responsibility for reuniting the two careers. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Then with a non-governmental organization. And with the help of such organizations as Liberty in North Korea, which helps people escape and settle in the South, he meets with North Koreans who tell first-hand stories of life on the other side. Tonight, in a meeting held at the UN Human Rights Office in Seoul, he meets young people. Among them is Chan Yang. Chan Yang explains how, after three years of separation from her family, she finally escaped. She underwent a dangerous onward journey through China. Mr. Darisman is concerned about people being returned to North Korea from other countries against international agreements. And then on to Thailand, where she was transferred to South Korea and finally reunited with her family. Three years have now passed, and Chan Yang's life has taken a new direction. Are you nervous? A little bit. <laughs> Exciting. It's okay. Through my story, people can understand um, North Korean's life 
even I'm on, on the TV show, even on the, uh, in front of camera, but I'm not actress, you know. I'm just normal people from North Korea. 오늘도 귀한 손님 두분 함께 나와 계십니다. 주찬양 자매님. 극동 방송을 저희가 들으면 이해가 잘안 되는데 아버지는 그나마 들으시더라고요. 계단 나무 위에 놓고. 저는 북쪽에 있을 때 몰래 몰래 진짜 목숨을 걸고 그 자유의 목소리를 들었던 경험이 있잖아요. 그러니까 또 다른 저 같은 사람들이 고향에 있을 것이다. 라는 그런 믿음으로 저도 이거를 하는 거죠. 주양 actually it's her first time. to the United States, and so please give it up for Chu Yang. Growing up in North Korea, accessing foreign media despite the government's restrictions. Chu Yang is a great example of the value and the role that North Korean refugees can play. Because she's helping South Korea and even international audiences understand a lot more than we used to about North Korea. So, I'm so happy now. Yeah, like dreaming. Thank you. Mr. Dara's man's role also includes sharing information about what's going on inside this closed state to foster the urgent need for change. As one of dozens of special rapporteurs, he and the other independent experts are mandated to investigate whether countries are upholding international human rights. And Mr. Darizman's priority now is to help bring those responsible for the violations to justice. To begin to imagine the psychological suffering of these families. For the moment, we do have to recognize that uh, the uh, Democratic People's Republic of Korea continues to pose a challenge to the uh, international community in terms of its continuing practice of totalitarian repression of its uh, people. We do have satellite imageries that clearly corroborates the existence of these camps. Between 180 to 200,000 inmates are being incarcerated. Crimes against humanity took place and continue to take place in that country. As well as taking part in a UN Commission of Inquiry in 2013, the reports on his findings go to the highest level, here at the General Assembly in New York. Acts of torture and horrific ill-treatment of individuals. Mr. President, as a delegation of the country concerned, we would like once again to categorically reject the Special Rapporteur and his report on the human rights situation in the DPRK. This Special Rapporteur and his report constitute extreme manifestation of politicization, selectivity, and double standards, and have no relevance whatsoever with genuine human rights. We did serve notice to the Supreme Leader that, that for crimes against humanity, uh, these have to be stopped. Yeah. Now that was in 2014. Nothing much has happened. We are now in an accountability stage. The Commission of Inquiry did recommend that the Democratic People's Republic of Korea be referred to the ICC. The ICC, or International Criminal Court, prosecutes genocide, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. And this would, of course, uh, mean that, as is the procedure, that the ICC take up prosecutions of those at the highest level of responsibility. Meanwhile, as high-level negotiations continue, Chan Yang faces some challenges in her new life. Time machine, Tago, Odi, Jogi, Oregon, Sege, so Kapjagi, Mide, Sege, Lo, and Lukim, Chomenun. 엄청 힘들었던 것 같아요. 한국에 오니까 그냥 내가 하고 싶은 거 내가 다 이렇게 골라 놓으면 돼. 약간 북에는 도둑 도둑하는 것도 되게 많고 막 그런데 처음 왔을 때는 대형 마트 같은 데 가서도 이렇게 막 뭐를 이렇게 밀면서 거기에 이렇게 담아 놓고 이렇게 해야 되는데 그런 걸 처음에 모르니까 사람들이 다 구경하고 저희를 지하철 카드 하고 이런 거는 그래도 계속 배워 동생들인데서 배웠어요. 지금은 다 하세요. 저도 가방으로 봤죠. 저번에 봤죠. 가방으로 찍찍 이렇게 되잖아요. 
현재 남북관계 상황에서 가장 중요한 것은 어, 지난 단절된 그 관계에서 신뢰를 하루빨리 회복해 나가면서 어, 신뢰관계를 축적하면서 협력의 길로 나아가는 게 가장 큰 과제입니다. 세계 평화와 동북아의 평화 안정을 위해서도 한반도의 통일이 꼭 필요하다고 생각이 됩니다. The international community is not only doing something for the Koreans, but it is also the Koreans you know, that are showing the world it will take time, but it will finally reach that uh, moment of truth, and uh, that uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel there. And preparations for Chan Yang's wedding are now well underway. <laughs> Rescued from the Nazis as a baby, he kept his faith in humanity. Holocaust survivor Tom Hoffman's story in his own words. My name is Tom Hoffman and I am 70 years old. I was born on May 8, 1944 in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, a few months earlier, the Germans had entered to uh, complete the final solution, which was the extermination of all Jews. We had entered the uh, Budapest ghetto, but my mother knew that we couldn't stay there. So we were hidden in a Christian family for several months. Margit and Pishta worked for my dad, and Margit came into the ghetto and carried me and my sister out as if we were her children. She took us into her home, and she hid us. When the Germans came, we were put into a, a false wall. From some miracle, the two infants never cried. These were heroic people who risked their lives. How do you pay back? You know, someone who did that. We were hidden until the liberation in early 1945, uh, when the Russians and the Americans entered Budapest. I feel very fortunate. I feel very lucky, and, uh, and I know a lot of people were deprived of that, children. We know as the mothers were walking to the gas chambers, sometimes holding the hand of their children, they sang a song, Ani Mami, Ani Mami, and those two words, I mean, I believe. Sometimes people wonder why I am so committed to undoing injustices. I became a lawyer because I wanted to help others as I was helped. I try to help people who have been unjustly convicted and try to save them as I was saved. The United Nations and the principles that it stands gives us hope that we could do things together in a peaceful way and allow the world to finally put these holocausts 
behind us and to live together.